Welcome to the OVA vlog. This is part four of a four-part series. We have a very, very, very special guest with us, my mom. Thank you, Lily. It's Julie. Her name is Julie. And this is part four, as I said, of a four-part series where we're talking to my mom about her pregnancies. So I'm visiting her. I thought this was a great opportunity to take some time to talk to my mom about her experiences. Learned a lot. And this episode is all about her, the birth of her third child, which um, if you listen to the first episode, she talked about how that pregnancy, her first pregnancy, was very uneventful. Well, this one was a lot more eventful, and she's going to talk a little bit about that. So, Mom, without further ado, what was the third pregnant or the what was Chase's pregnancy like? Um, I was 35, and I found out that I was pregnant, and was somewhat surprised and excited. Um, and early on, found out that I was going to have a boy. And part of that discovery, we found out that I had um, what looked like two placentas, which would indicate that there was going to be twins. And um, But it was a little more um, unknown because they didn't see a fetus in that second placenta. So they thought that maybe I had the body had sloughed off that. Um, those cells, but I created this other placenta. Uh, but as we, as a pro the pregnancy progressed, I had multiple um, ultrasounds, and they found that what they were really seeing was a fiber band. And in looking at the fetus that was growing, they they weren't able to see all of the extremities, and they were concerned that the the fetus's hand, because that was one of the things that they could not see was caught up in that band and that was the reason why they couldn't find it. So because of that discovery, I had multiple ultrasounds, you know, pretty regularly. You know, for a while it was every two weeks. And, um, and then by the time I was six and a half months pregnant, I was having Braxton Hicks. I was having contractions, these, and, um, and they would get worse. And, and at one point, they put me on some medication that was kind of a, cra a crazy medication. I can't tell you what it was. It's been a while ago. But, um, and I was sent to bed, you know, on bed, bed rest, rest. Yeah. and um, which was really hard for me because I'm kind of an active yeah. person. <laughs> oh. And I never put on a pair of pajamas. I got rest every day because I wasn't going to be a bed person. But even though, but I was really careful because I didn't want to lose this pregnancy. And um, so things were not getting better, and so they sent me to Seattle to see a specialist who, at that point, didn't see Chase's hand either and couldn't confirm or, you know, one way or the other whether or not he was going to come healthy, um, come out to be a healthy baby. But we, we knew early on that we were going to have to have a cesarean section, cesarean, because we didn't want to take any chances to put any undue pressure on that fetus. And, you know, at that point it was my little boy. Um, so I went into labor in February. And I was actually only about three weeks shy of, shy of what my due date was going to be. And... Um, they tried to do an epidural, and early on in my life, I had had scoliosis. I was diagnosed with scoliosis, and my I had my spine fused. And when they went to do the epidural, they weren't able to um, get the needle in there correctly. So we ended up putting me completely under for the C-section, and um, so I didn't get to be awake for the birth like I was for my other two live births, and. But I do remember coming to or co being um, waking up. Well, I remember being um, brought to a, my room during recovery, and my sister was the first person to see me, and she said, "Julie, Julie, he's healthy. He's good. He has all of his hands. He has his fingers, and he's got curly red hair." And um, and so, and I, and I fell asleep happy, and um, I can just tell you that, that that was an amazing moment for me, that I had this healthy boy, and with all that trying time, and 
you know, but there were some residuals from having that that attempted epidural. I did end up with some severe migraines from it, and that's a common event when they're when they're poking you. I heard I knew later. But as far as the you had to go back to the hospital. I did. Yeah. I had to go back in because um, they had to give me an IV to give me fluids because the migraine wouldn't go away. And um, but after that, things kind of calmed down and the the incision healed. It was she did a really good job, and um, you know I was able to come home and and breastfeed the baby and and I think that I experienced a little more effort to breastfeed Chase because of that time period of having to go back to the hospital and and they even let me bring him back so he was with me when I was trying to get recovered so yeah it was really good but you know he's a healthy boy and um, he's six foot tall oh, I'm so proud of that <laughs> yeah, <I'm proud> of <laughs> our two daughters are short we are fine <laughs> Um, um, thank you for listening. Yeah, to I, so this, this is the end, the end of the four part series. Maybe next year we'll do another series of other intimate health topics. Um, cause I know you've had other, um, topics come up, menopause, ovarian cysts. There's a lot that we could talk about, but thank you so much for sharing, um, all of your, uh, your experiences with pregnancy and I highly encourage you to talk to your mom if you can if you feel comfortable because really? you really do learn a lot and it it does ground you a little bit more in this whole concept because it's okay my mom did this I mean obviously she did this I'm here but it just it's really it's a helpful helpful thing to do so talk to your mom yeah. awesome thank you Oh. I love you. I love you too. Okay. Bye.